Cops have to arrest all different types of people. However, what happens when it's a cop's own boss that he has to put in handcuffs? There's things that we can do to fix this. Person. Here are four examples of this incredibly rare situation, starting with the case of Michael Yarbrough. On June 20th, 2023, a Georgia police officer pulled over a Dodge Charger that was going way over the 35 mile an hour speed limit. However, when he walked up to the window, he got a huge surprise. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the man behind the wheel was chief deputy of the local PD, Michael Yarbrough. Not the person this officer expected to pull over. But in reality, this changes nothing. And the officer asks Yarbrough to give over his license and registration, something he's not pleased with at all. Guess who I just pulled over? Hey. Yarbrough. Really? Yeah, the chief deputy driving a Dodge Charger, a souped up Dodge Charger belongs to the sheriff's office. I just clocked this 96 in a 35. What was the issue? I mean, why is he speeding? No, no reason. He's in an unmarked car. He just got a high horsepower car and decided he wanted to play. It's your traffic stop. You do what you think you should do. I mean, I, I'm not telling you one way or the other. You can do a 96 in a 35. Okay. Well, you know I don't care for him, so I'm going to ride his <laughs> if body cams weren't around, this stop could have gone a totally different way. But it seems like this officer isn't the biggest fan of Yarbrough and decides to issue him a citation for speeding. For some, handing your boss a $500 fine is a dream come true. And it looks like it's the same way for this officer. Sir, here's your ID back. This is your copy of the citation. If you would sign right here, it's got a court date, time it's a must appear. Yes, sir. Please slow down and have a safe day. In Georgia, speeding tickets are priced based on how much you're exceeding the speed limit. For example, if you're over 24 miles an hour over, you're looking at $500 in fines. However, there's an extra super speeder charge you're liable to if you're going as fast as Yarbrough was. But it looks like this officer decided to mess with his boss even more, as this ticket excluded the extra fee, but instead required him to appear in court. After the incident, Yarbrough was also suspended for 40 hours without Hey, however, that's just a fraction of what Corporal Scott Bertzik was hit with after crashing his car while drunk. Reached out for my lighter, slammed it into his ass. Cool. No, not really. Not really. No. Are you okay? Oh yeah, no, I'm good. Your car sucked up. No, absolutely. Which I just fucking fixed. Obviously, Brooke and Scott are familiar with each other, and curiously, Scott holds nothing back when describing exactly how the incident went down. It's clear that Scott is the one at fault here, so before going any further, Brooke decides to call back to the base to ask whether or not it's okay for her to be handling this incident. This crash, um, Birdie, the Ahsoka market? Okay. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've worked a crash with one of us in it, so... No, he's not on duty. He's in his POV. I just didn't want there to be any, like, conflict of interest type issues. All right, that was it. I just wanted to make sure. All right, bye. Damn it, Birdie. Brooke is given the go-ahead and told that there should be no issues with her handling this case, but that was before she noticed this. You good? Uh, wait. Huh? Wait on his way. He's not coming. Good? Walking home, but yep, I'm good. So, Birdie... You, you giving me some indicators? Oh. Listen, listen. Get the woman. Listen, <laughs> Valdez is coming out just to... I, I'm not going to lie to you about it. She's on her way? Yeah, she's on her way. I'm not really comfortable with this whole thing at all, but I'm not going to lie to you about it. Oh, no. I, I don't mean to put you in that indi... Yep. From now on, you know how it goes. You can't consume anything, okay? Because right now, you, you're being detained. Wait, what? It's obvious that Scott is under the influence of something. Judging by his slurred speech, slowed reactions, and slight loss of motor control, Brooke is fairly sure he's been drinking. At this point, Scott is no longer her supervisor. He's just a suspect in a case. And what's more, he's drunk and likely unpredictable, a combination which can be incredibly threatening to a female officer. Please don't make my life difficult. I would never do that to you. Okay, I, I'm very uncomfortable right now. And, and I apologize for putting you in that position. Are you on? Yes, yes I am. And I'm going to remain on for integrity. 
smoke. You know you can't smoke right now. What? Because if I'm going to do a DUI investigation, it impedes it, so you can't consume anything. I want to get that dog. That is a really cute dog. Fear aggression issue. You can always train a dog. You can't consume anything. You're killing me. Trying. After a short wait, another officer arrives at the scene, meaning they can finally start getting to the bottom of all of this with some sobriety tests. These lasted over 10 minutes, but it's not hard to tell how they went by just looking at a few seconds of them. You may begin the test. One, two, three. <laughs> Judging by this and the overwhelming amounts of evidence against him at this point, the officers thought it was safe to conclude that Scott had been drinking that night and decided it was time to put him in cuffs. Something he was far from happy about. There's things that we can do to fix this, but... It's got the hinge locks. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Despite Scott being one of the most polite and respectful suspects ever on this channel, he was actually hit with a better sentence than the majority of criminal cops. After blowing a .156 back at the station, he was charged with driving under the influence and damaging property. He was ordered to pay just under $1,000 in fines, serve 50 hours of community service, and take multiple substance abuse and DUI classes, and had his driver's license suspended for six months. He was also sued by the driver of the vehicle he hit, and a cash settlement was reached. And on top of all of that, he also was suspended without pay for a week and given a last chance agreement, meaning one more slip up and he was out for good. Realistically, that's exactly how one of these cases should be handled. But when New Mexico police were put in the same position, they instead showed just how corrupt America's cops can be. I'm not going to arrest you tonight. I've had any, I just say don't drive. This cop pulled over a truck in Lordsburg after suspecting the driver may have been drinking. However, after walking up to the window, he was hit with a wave of shock and disappointment. Hello. Glenn. Jesus. <laughs> the reason I pulled you over because you were kind of swerving back there. You're good? The driver was the city's mayor, and this was the third time she's been pulled over for this exact offense. And what's worse, she was driving like this with her foster child in the car. You have your registration in your insurance, please? You okay, bud? Yeah. Yeah? We're all good. The cops are now in an extremely awkward position, but after a short chat, they decide that they should proceed with the stop normally and do their jobs, at least for now. Hey, Glenda, you might step in another vehicle where we go over if you pick her up on my unit real quick. Yep. How, how much have you had? Three or four. Three or four? Okay. Yeah. As Glenda exited the vehicle, both of the officers noticed a strong smell of alcohol on her, and she quickly admitted to having a few drinks that night. Her slow speech and movement implies that she's definitely over the legal limit to drive, but this is the third time she's been pulled over for driving drunk. Will this really be the time she's punished for it? This officer certainly thinks there's a chance. Please, let me just get him home. Get who? Ethan. You know, you know I'm, I'm the type of cop who doesn't get breaks on this Okay. Yeah, that doesn't get breaks. When I approached the vehicle, I did notice an odor of alcohol coming from uh, from alcohol coming from inside the vehicle. When I observed you walk out, you were kind of swerving all over the place, okay? And then right now, you're just, as, as you're standing, you're kind of swaying side to side. Thing is, you're the mayor, okay? I, I'm your employee. It doesn't matter. It I'm doesn't your employee. Matter. But now that you're standing downwind, I, I, I can smell it. Well, I'm not could, denying it. Yeah, we could smell it on you, and the way you got out of your vehicle, Glenda, it would stop you. As the officer said, Glenda is their boss, so there's clearly a conflict of interest here. So they call up New Mexico State Police to handle it from here. But when the original cops learn of the outcome, they realize they probably could have done a better job themselves. You're right there at that point. I don't think you're quite over the limit off of the clues that I saw, but I think you're you're right close to it. Where the limit might be 0.08, I think you're about a 0.06. My house is literally right, right around the corner. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to arrest you tonight. 
okay? But if you've had any, I just say don't, don't drive. Somehow, despite all the clues that the first two officers picked up, the state cops decided she wasn't over the limit when they arrived and was therefore free to drive. Now, there's obviously the debate of corruption here, given that she's the mayor, but let's take his word as fact for now. The cop decided he thinks Glenda is at a .06 right now, but this was an hour after the initial stop was made, taking into account that your blood alcohol level drops at a rate of around .015 an hour, Glenda was getting extremely close to the coveted .08 she'd be charged for. You may also be wondering why the cops didn't just use a breathalyzer to test her blood alcohol level immediately. The answer there lies in the Fourth Amendment. Cops have to provide probable cause that a driver is impaired before they're allowed to collect chemical evidence that proves this. That's what the sobriety tests are for. The combination of these two problems is what led to Glenda going home that night instead of to jail, why this is her third time being pulled over for this, and why it probably won't be her last. But unfortunately for this next boss, his employee wasn't so kind when it came to his DUI stop. Stay in your vehicle. Back in your car. I'm drunk? No, I'm the captain. Huh? I'm the captain. A what? Captain. Of what? The big don't reach in your pocket. Get back in your car. Have a seat. I, I will. I'm not. You've been drinking tonight? I just got a ride. You've been drinking tonight, sir. I'm a captain on the police department. What police department? Oklahoma City. What division? Investigations. How much we had to drink tonight, sir? Huh? I'm not turning my camera off. Okay. This guy isn't just drunk. He's absolutely hammered, even to the point where he thinks the camera can't hear him whispering. But despite the captain's pleas, the officer refuses to turn off his camera and continues with the investigation. Go ahead and step out of the vehicle. You gotta be kidding me. How much we drink tonight, sir? I was at a poker game. Uh huh. Because you're swerving all over when you turn off or you didn't use your signal. I'm sorry. How much you drink at your poker game? Not much. Not much? Mm -hmm. How much is not much? I don't know. Beer? Liquor? Yeah. How Beer. many beers? Three or four. Three or four? How long ago was that? It's been going on a while. How long ago did you drink your last beer, sir? What time is it now? It's 0140. Midnight. You think you should drive it? No, but I came from four blocks. Your mom, your mom lives here. I live here. You live here? Yes. Come over to the rear of your vehicle. Okay. You got any weapons or anything on you? I do not, sir. Those must have been a strong few beers, as not only was he stumbling over his words, but apparently also swerving across both lanes on his way home. The captain is then searched and told to stand in the open where he's tested on his balance and sobriety. Hands down by your side, please. Look straight ahead. You see the tip of my pen, sir? I do. I want you to follow the tip of my pen without moving your head, okay? Come over here where it's a little bit more level. I'm going to demonstrate for you first. While I'm demonstrating, I want you to stand with your feet together, hands down by your side, just like this. All right, sir. What's your name? Matt French. Matt French. Mr. French, stand just like that for me. When I tell you to begin, okay, I'm just going to demonstrate for you first. I want you to pick a foot of your choosing. It doesn't matter if it's your left or your right foot. I'm from here. And I want you to lift it approximately six inches off the ground. And while you look at your toe, I want you to count by 1,000s. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, so on and so forth until I tell you to stop. At any point in time, you lose your balance, your foot touches the ground. Just go ahead and pick your foot back up and continue to count, okay? Do you understand these instructions I've explained to you, I Mr. Did. French? You may begin. One thousand. Keep sir, going. Can, can you turn that off? I cannot, sir. Please. I know you're aware of our body cam policy. You know I cannot turn I, off this body I cam. I do, but I'd like to talk to you. I can't mm -hmm. do that, sir. Please. Are you going to do the test or not? Will you please talk to me? I'll 
I'll talk you, to you once we're done. You can turn it off, you can turn it on. I can turn it off once I'm done with my investigation, sir. Okay. I'm a captain on this police department. I understand that, sir. I get And that. I am a sergeant on this police officer, and I I've taken an oath to uphold the law. I, I don't not. show favoritism to anyone, regardless. I don't I, care if you're a gangbanger or the president of the United States. Sir, I'm not asking you for that. If I was to treat you differently than I was to treat like some South Side loco or some pedo, how's that look on me? Okay, I'm not asking you for that. Because I wouldn't do that for any of them. Even as the captain begs him to turn his camera off and just talk, the officer stands his ground and states that he has to treat everyone the same or his job and livelihood could be at risk. He's showing a fantastic amount of integrity that unfortunately we don't get to see too often, likely due to people like this trying to pull rank. They then continue with the third and final test, involving simply walking heel to toe for 10 steps. All right, anytime you're ready, you may begin. One, two, three. Go ahead and turn around for me and put your hands behind your back. Are you going to arrest me, sir? Yes, I am. Can I talk to you? Go ahead and put your hands behind your back, sir. Now that the investigation is concluded and the perp is placed under arrest, the officer turns off his camera and returns the captain to the police department. Not only was he suspended from his position as Oklahoma police captain, but he was also hit with the regular punishments for DUI, likely amounting to a small fine and a few months in jail. If you enjoy true crime videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to see more.